So every year my family goes on vacation to Daytona Beach, Florida, which is super cool if you like NASCAR or driving on the beach. And as it turns out, I like both of those. I'm just kidding, NASCAR sucks. But anyway, I thought this would be a great occasion to test out my Contax G1 on the beach. I'd reckon that some salty air would be just what the doctor ordered for those 1980s model electronics inside the Contax. But this was a family trip, so I thought the Contax G1 would be a great choice because it was autofocused. The shots wouldn't require too much thinking. So I escaped Public Defender Hell for a few days and then met my family at the beach. Getting down there would require me driving through the night through the Kakalakis and Georgia. I drove all through the night fueled by nothing but monster energy and my chemical romance. After all of about three hours of sleep, I woke up and I was primed and ready to head to the beach. Before I went outside though and met my kids at the beach, I did load a legendary film stock into my camera. On this trip, I would be shooting nothing but Kodak Gold 200. Daytona is a city that has kind of a weird aesthetic, right? It has the pastel colors and the condos of Miami, but it's also just a little bit more redneck with big trucks and rebel flags and all of that nonsense. But I thought the warmer tones of Kodak 200 would go really well with that vintage aesthetic of Daytona Beach, Florida. We didn't really do a lot on our first day at the beach, but I did manage to get some cool shots and I do think that the film suited the environment. Awesome. What's better than watermelon on the beach? Maybe don't answer that. Anyway, we cut up a watermelon for my kids. I thought the film did a great job capturing the colors of the watermelon. That night, I wanted something for dinner, a little more cultural, so we decided we would eat it out back. Anyway, we got checked in at the restaurant and we snapped these pictures. This is me and my daughter. No, we're not actually Oompa Loompas, but that does bear some explanation. This is a daylight balanced film, and we were very, very clearly under tungsten lighting in these shots. The film being tungsten balanced really shifts the images towards the orange end of the spectrum, and that's something that you're gonna have to think about if you are shooting this film in environments where there's gonna be tungsten light present, um, you are gonna get that very orange color shift in your images. Another thing that's worth pointing out is this is a relatively slow speed film as well. At ISO 200, although I was using a pretty fast lens, F2, the ISO ISO speed of 200 was still not very fast and I was shooting at pretty low shutter speeds in a lot of these images. The next morning it was back to building sandcastles and all that BS before, after a couple days, we decided to head back to Kentucky. So a few details about the film, much like Ric Flair, Kodak Gold 200 had its heyday back in the 80s and 90s. This was what moms used at soccer games, baseball games, football games. This is the kind of film that your life would most likely be chronicled in. It was a low cost film at the time. It's still a relatively low cost film relative to the other films, but it isn't marketed as a Kodak professional film. It's kind of a second tier film for Kodak, but first in our hearts. But my overall impression of using the film was this is a really, really good film. Very versatile, lots of different use cases for this film. It's pretty neutral in terms of color. It's a little more orange than the Fuji films. Fuji seems to be a little cooler. Gold 200 seems to be a little warmer. So that's something that's worth bearing in mind as you decide which low cost film to use. I think the sharpness of the film is really good as well. Some of that can be attributed to the really nice Carl Zeiss optics that I was using with my Contax camera. But the film is also really sharp too, being a low speed, ISO 200 film, not a lot of grain present. Price is right as well. I picked up three rolls of this film off Amazon for $19.95. So at roughly six bucks a shot, 
It's really hard to beat this stuff. If I had two words to describe the film, I would say effortlessly vintage. You can see by the warm coloring of the film, you can see by the warm coloring of the film, it does make your images look very nice, very vintage, very warm. I think a lot of folks who get into film photography want that vintage look. Well, this film is gonna give that to you, that naturally warm sepia look, and it's gonna make your images look great. There's some negatives to the film. That coloring is not gonna be suitable for all applications. This is probably not a film you're gonna to wanna to use for portraiture. It's probably also not a film you're gonna to wanna to use for landscapes. Um, with films like Velvia and Ektar offering much higher saturation, those are probably gonna be the go-to choice for landscapes. And Kodak has their portrait line of films marketed towards rendering nice skin tones. Um, if you want to take portraits. So this is a kind of film that exists in no man's land. But the benefit of that is it's a film that's really well-rounded. You can do a lot of things with it. I think this is a great casual film to document your life with. Just like those moms back in the 90s, this is a wonderful choice. Before you go, check out this video where I talk about five awesome other film stocks. But as always guys, thanks for watching.